Så hello everybody, it is Power Week. Det minns att det är Power BI timmar, så lyssnar ni Power BI desktop update. This time, April 2021. And to be fair, they actually released it last week, Friday evening, night for us. So I don't know if you know that it's out, but it is. And we're going to review it today, so this is Power Week for us. So, I will leave my best favorite updates at the end because I want to talk a little bit more about them. So for those of you that want to have like ding, 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 all the updates, let's get started. Okay, first update, small multiples. They are continuing developing the visual and they have added now padded control. And for a combo charts, which is the bar chart with the line chart, you can now also do uh, small multiples. So they are adding small multiples to more and more visuals, which is great. Now, this is a very, very neat um, update. They have added the same way as you have in PowerPoint, for example, or in Word, more shapes. So before you have just a few shapes, I think it was like a line and a circle, rectangular. Now you have like ton more to choose from. And this is actually very, very nice because it will allow the Power BI reports to look a little bit different. You know, we tend to use out of the box stuff. So this is a great update. Not only that, but they have also added more formatting features to shapes. We love that always. So you will be able to write text directly on the shape. You will be able to round the edges. You will be able to drop a shadow to your shade, to have a glow effect and to rotate not only the shape, but also the text. Yay. Thank you, Ethan. So he's going to be a new recruit for the Power BI team. Please, Ethan, just go wild on the visuals. Give us more formatting options. We would love you for that, please. Okay, next update. Now, this update is for modeling features. They have actually re released the possibility to connect to perspectives on direct query mode for analysis services models. Okay, so if you wanted to have that, it's available. So we have uh, two updates for DAX. The first one is the function cross filter. As you probably know, cross filter has three options of the how to set the relationship direction. You had one, uh, one way, none, and then you had both. And for many to many relationship that doesn't work. If you have set a many many to relationship before, you will see that on the relationship pane you have a. Uh, left filters right or right filters left and that options were not available in cross filters and now they have added them so you can use cross filter for many to many relationships so you can specify how the relationships or the filters will flow on a many to many relationship which is great the second one has to do again with if and switch so this time they say that they have improved the um, performance of both functions and for what I understand of what they write in here to me it means that if a uh, user has for example has a country uh, slicer and clicks on a country that filter the slicer filter will be passed to the if and the cross uh, and the switch function first to minimize the number of uh, data that it has to go through and then it will go through the if conditions afterwards. So first all the filters, all the context filters, and then the actual, you know, go through the data, which eventually means that it would improve functionality. That is my understanding. I mean, this is just very short text, so I can only guess, but I think that's what they mean. Now, when it goes to Power Query, there are two updates. They have a text CSV, by example, is now generally available, and it's basically a little bit of a machine algorithm that goes through your CSV and tries to identify how to extract the data in case it doesn't do it correctly. Generally available, that's great. And then both the exec tables and the Excel tables and JSON tables is also generally available and they have added a suggested tables for Excel, which is actually quite neat. So if you have a, you know, when you grab data from Excel, sometimes you have like Excel, like data in different blocks. So this will try to identify those blocks and deliver to you as tables. So I, let's try it. I think it's a great addition to it. If you don't want those tables, don't, don't have them, but it's nice that it's there and they're trying to help you improve or import your data. And for, JSON, it will add support for JSON lines, where each line on the JSON is 
is a rogue, basically, of data. So it will identify that and bring that back to you. Now, when it comes to the Power BI service, they have updated the sharing experience. And what I re read first very quickly was like, oh, it's the same as Office 365. And it, it is, it is the same experience as Office 365, the panel looks the same, but they have other Power BI functionality, don't miss that. So they have, did you have the same experience as with Office 365 of copying the links, sending the link to Outlook, sending it to Teams, and then you have the possibility to send the link to a specific person, okay? So you have the three options, actually. You have send to people in your organization, people with existing access, or specific people. And the people for the entire organization, you can actually disable that on the Power BI admin tenant in case you're like, I don't want to go there. And not only that, obviously you need to have control of those links, who you send it to, or who somebody, <laughs> who that report has been sent to. So there is a manage shared links um, panel. So if you click on the dot dot dot, you will be able to go into there and see who is who that report has been shared to, how it has been shared to, you can you know manage all the access. It's really, really neat actually. They've done a beautiful job, I think. So test the experience, give them feedback as always. I've, yo, one one last thing. Only a thousand links, but my God, it's a thousand links. You don't want to give <laughs> a thousand individual links. You probably shouldn't, but a thousand links is a limit of links to share a report. So last but not least on the, the bulk of the updates is the simplifying collection of diagnostic information. So they have made it a little bit easier for users to actually do the right things in order to collect this um, diagnostic information so they can send it to the support team so they can take a look at what is wrong or what's happening okay so check that experience out too now the two stars of this month it is number one the flow update there is now a flow visual on power bi desktop what does that mean it means that you can create a button on your report and when a user clicks on it something happens so that is triggered by flow so I, I, I can see it in front of me, big green export to Excel buttons everywhere, right? I am going to definitely create one because I have some visual cases for it, but I can see it everywhere, export to Excel. So don't be shy, enable export to Excel. If your user needs it, give it to them. I, I'm not sure if it's possible. Probably is possible, but I'll, I'll check it out. If it is, I'll, I'll do a video about it. Otherwise, I will probably do a video about it anyway because I have some use cases that I want to work with. So my favorite update of all is Charticulator. So if you don't know what Charticulator is, it's basically a way to create custom visuals without writing any code. Charticulator has existed and still exists as a standalone, so you can use it in websites and whatever you want. But now they have it embedded in a visual, in a custom visual for Power BI, so you can have the entire Charticulator experience within Power BI and create your visuals in there. Really, really nice. Now, to me, I, I know that I was really, really excited, you know, the Power BI team, they actually showed us and us, I mean, MVPs, like, hey, we're going to release this, How, why don't you take a look and tell us what you think? So I went all in because I really love the concept. And that whole experience ruined it for me because I went in and I look at everything that I didn't like to give proper feedback. <laughs> and now everything I see is everything I don't like, which I'll get over it. And I will definitely go into do like cool charticular stuff for you. We will do it together. But oh my God, I'm not going to do that again. It just ruined the whole charticular experience for me, for sure. With that aside, there is two things to think about, or one thing especially for you now. It is not certified. I believe they intend to certify it, but it's not certified, which means that a lot of users won't be able to install it yet. So please make sure that you leave that feedback so they certify it, because I think they are waiting for user feedback in order to continue development. And I wish they would do it. They will do it. They will go for it and just develop further. And I wish it was a native visual in Power BI. 
then that would be what makes the most sense and then they will clean it up and yeah you, you know so <laughs> fingers crossed give feedback i will definitely do charticulator um Tutorials. I already have a playlist on my second channel. I'm going to link it down below so you can go and check it out. Uh, there, I'll do it on the standalone tool. But again, you can import it as a template and use it. So <laughs> it's quite fun. We will do more. We will do more. But uh, oh my gosh, what a shame. Okay, so as always, which one was your favorite update? For me, it is obviously uh, both chart clear and flow, and. Uh, we will do, I will do, for sure, more videos about both of them because I have some use cases that are quite cool. But um, let me know what it was. I will see you again on Wednesday with a short update. And until then, as always, take care. Bye-bye.